I once again welcome you all on the session on the herbal drug technology. So in the today's session, we are going to start the new beat, that is the drug interaction. We are going to discuss the herb drug interactions and herb food interaction. All of you are aware about the allopathic medicines, right? Allopathic medicines, they are given singly. If the patient is having a chronic diseases, chronic diseases, say for example, epilepsy, cardiovascular diseases, diabetes mellitus, say for example, cancer, and so on. In such cases, in such cases, generally physicians used to prescribe more than one drug to the patient. Right. No doubt, one tablet contains only one drug. Isn't it? But the patient is on a therapy of therapy of the so many drugs. Means patient is taking more than two to three drugs at a time. Two to three drugs at a time. And all these drugs are having the different effect on the body. Their mechanism of action is not same. Their side effects are different. Their receptor affinity is different. Their receptor affinity is different. Their actions are different on the different major organs. Say, for example, kidney, liver, systemic circulation, brain, and so on. Right. If you can take the example of a liver, maybe there are certain drugs are there. They are going to act as an inducer or the inhibitor. They are going to release, they are going to promote the certain enzymes which are responsible for the metabolism of other drugs. There are certain drugs are there. They are going to inhibit the certain enzymes which are responsible for metabolism of other drugs, which is concomitantly given to the patient. So that may lead to the either increase in a plasma concentration of the another drug or, or decrease in a plasma concentration. So that could alter the efficacy of drug as well as its adverse effects or the side effects. Isn't it? This is the one case, one scenario. If we will move further, because we are taking the medicines by oral route, initially it reaches to liver. That's why I have taken first. Means before that, the part is related with the GIT. Isn't it? Whatever we have, we are consuming, it reaches to stomach, it reaches to small intestine, it reaches to colon. Isn't it initially disintegration, dissolution, and absorption? There are certain drugs are there. They are going to modulate the absorption of a drug from the GIP, from the GIP. Either the active medicament or potent drug, they are going to be adsorbed on the another drug, another drug, for example, cholesteramine, for example, aluminum hydroxide. Magnesium hydroxide, take example of tetracycline and calcium, isn't it? Complex formation. There are so many mechanisms are there by which the absorption of a drug is going to be reduced from GI. Similarly, there are certain drugs are there, they are going to promote the absorption of a drug from the gastrointestinal tract. Isn't it? The mechanism underlying that different. It's not a part of this discussion. So the first is a GIT absorption, either it is going to be increased or it is going to be decreased. Second one, earlier we have discussed that is related to liver. The third, that is related with the systemic circulation. It is not a systemic circulation, it is moreover related with the distribution of drug. Right? Distribution, it seems to be the protein binding and majority of drug bounds to the albumin. Correct? And if there is any displacement, if there is any displacement, any competition between the two drugs towards the albumin, that may lead to the rise in a plasma concentration of the drug and furthermore leads to the, leads to the toxicity or the effects are going to be increased. For example, phenylbutazone and varfarin. If the patient is on therapy of the warfarin and we have started the phenylbutazone, phenylbutazone is having the highest affinity towards warfarin and it displaces very small quantity of warfarin and that may lead to the bleeding. Furthermore, if it is not treated, there might be chances of death of patient, right? So, which is a very important and significant type of drug interaction. 
So this is related to distribution. After distribution, see, in the case of distribution, so many other things are there, but here I am going to cite only the major one. If furthermore the drug reaches to the kidney, right, for the excretion, we are considering only the soluble component. Only, uh, sorry, not a soluble, we are considering only the uh, parent compound of drug. We, we are not considering here the metabolized fraction of drug because which is being cleared by the liver, which is being excreted by the liver. Liver has converted into the very simple form from complex to simple. So in the case of, take example of, a, in the case of kidney, take example of a penicillin, which is having a very broad spectrum, right? And penicillin, majorly, they are being eliminated, excreted by the kidney. And if we have simultaneously started the probenicid, what will happen? There will be the competition between the probenicid and penicillin because both the drugs are going to be excreted by the acting secretion <coughs> mechanism, right? So the probenicid is going to be reached into the urine and the efficacy of penicillin is going to be. So this is something about the scenario related with the allopathic medicine. When we are considering the herbal drug, herbal medicine or pharmacognostic drug, if you can see the, take any example of the, any, 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 any drug, any crude drug from the pharmacognosis, take example of amla. Amla contains so many phytoconstituents. It comprises the tannins, it comprises the alkaloids, it comprises the vitamin C and so many other minerals are, uh, which are present, proteins and minerals are present in the amla. It is not at all feasible or possible for us to separate the each fraction of amla. So whenever we are making certain dosage forms of amla, it comprises the many phytoconstituents, isn't it? This is not a case like a allopathic medicine. In the case of allopathic medicine, we are, we are prescribing the, the single active principle to the patient, right? If polytherapy is there, it is possible to understand the mechanism underlying respect to drug interaction. But in the case of the herbal medicine, there are so many phytoconstituents which are present in the formulation of the specific uh, drug. It becomes, there are the increased chances of drug interaction. That is a drug-herb interaction. Isn't it? Herb drug interaction or the food drug interaction. Isn't it? And our next topic, which is related with the drug interaction, that's her drug and her food drug interaction. Right? So with this brief introduction, with this brief introduction, hope all of you have understood the things related with the allopathic medicines, moving towards the herbal medicine. How herbal medicines as well as food, how they are going to interact with the various drugs and how they are going to change their effects, their toxicities and so on. So let us see the content of the topic, her drug and her food interaction. So we are going to discuss the general introduction to interaction and its classification, then study of the following drug and their possible side effects and interactions like Hypersium, Tawakawa, Ginkgo biloba, ginseng, garlic, pepper, and the ephedra. Let us move towards the learning objectives which I have set for the topic herb drug and herb food interaction. So you will be able to understand general introduction to interactions and its classification. So we are going to discuss an introduction to the interactions along with the classification of the interactions, how these interactions are going to be classified, herb drug interactions and so on. The second objective I have said, that is uh, you will be able to describe side effects and interactions of hypericum, kawakawa, ginkgo biloba, ginseng, garlic, Paper and the ephedra. So these are the learning objectives which I have set for the topic 
her drug and her food interaction so let us move towards the introduction to the drug interaction so what is mean by the drug interaction the first question in mind what is the interaction when we are prescribing the two medicines to the patient there might be the drug a it is going to affect it is going to alter it is going to modulate the effect of drug b by certain mechanism isn't it so in such cases it is said to be the interaction so here in the drug interaction there is a alteration in the duration or a magnitude of pharmacological effect of one drug produced by another drug or the her food or the other substances that is known as the her drug or the her food interaction you might know the particular definition related with the drug interaction only thing is that we are considering here the interaction between the herb or food with the drug so there is a alteration in the duration or magnitude of pharmacological effect of one drug produced by the another herb food or the other substance so drug interaction is a reaction between two or more drugs or between the drug and a food beverages or supplement inside the body so it seems to be whatever interaction we are getting it is due to the we are consuming the certain phytoconstituent certain crude drug certain food material certain beverages certain supplement which are present in the body along with the certain allopathic medicine isn't it so all these uh, whatever phytoconstituents are there which are present in the herbal drug or the food material we are going to be interacted with the specific allopathic medication so a drug interaction can make the drug less effective so whatever the drug interaction is there either either they are going to decrease the effect of the drug or they are going to increase the activity of drug or they are going to cause the unwanted side effect so when we are combining the herb with a drug there might be chances of increase in the duration of action increase in the pharmacological effect increase in the side effects of the drug or the it might be lethal to the patient not all the herbal medicines not all the herbs or food products they are going to interact with the drug but there are certain uh, uh, herbs are there which shows the significant uh, interactions with the certain drug so herb drug interactions occur between the herbal medicine and the conventional drug that is that is the allopathic medication these interactions are more common than the drug drug interactions because of herbal medicine contain multiple pharmacologically active ingredient the chances of the herb drug interaction is more because of herb contains many more phytoconstituents which produce the different pharmacological action while the conventional drug contains a single ingredient the chances of drug interaction related with the drug allopathic medication it is uh, on the lower side so some of the these interactions are significant say for example xyz herb it is going to produce the liver toxicity one should avoid such drugs with the herb producing the liver toxicity right isn't it because that may leads to the damage to the liver so this is a kind of significant herb drug interaction but not all herbs shows the significant interactions they are not at such lethal to the patient so the drugs which are very important one when we are considering the herb drug interactions because they have the narrow therapeutic indices for example warfarin 
insulin aspirin digoxin and ticlopidine there are so many other drugs are also there they are going to show the significant interaction with the herbal medicine there are certain herbs that are there in which uh, we are getting the significant herb drug interactions for example scent john's wort that is hypericum then the magnesium as one of the mineral then the calcium one of the mineral then iron and the ginkgo biloba there are so many other drug herbs that are also there we will discuss the thing later on so with this brief introduction let us move towards the classification of the herb drug herb food interaction there are two classifications i have shown on the slide one case i have considered the classification according to ayurveda and in a one another side i have shown the classification according to mechanism of interaction so according to the ayurveda the drug interactions herb drug interactions or drug interactions are classified as the herb herb interaction herb food interaction herb drug interaction so here the drug is of a animal origin then interaction related to disease that is herb disease interaction so there are four types of interactions are there according to ayurveda that is a herb herb interaction herb food interaction herb drug interaction you can say and interaction related with the disease so very first one that is a herb herb interaction so here the two herbs when we are combining they, they, there is a alteration in the pharmacological effect alteration in the side effect for example piper betel should not be administered with the grassinia morella isn't it then the second one that is a herb food interaction one should not combine the tea with the garlic there might be chances of excessive bleeding you know that the garlic it is having the ability to give the bleeding effect so it should not be combined with the tea isn't it so tea it is a part of food garlic it is a part of drug or food then herb and a drug of animal origin that is a meat it should be contraindicated or it should not be taken with brassica alba that is known as the white mustard so this is the kind of interaction that is a herb with the drug from the animal origin then interaction related with the disease that is harith ki that is a beda cannot be administered to the pregnant woman then uh, ginseng should be avoided in the organ transplant patient because ginseng it is a immune booster and we know that uh, there might be chances of rejection of the organ so in this way it is possible to classify the interactions according to ayurveda let us move towards the modern classification which you have studied in the pharmacology so the furthermore according to their mechanism of action drug interactions are classified into the pharmacodynamic interactions and the pharmacokinetic interaction so in the case of pharmacodynamic interactions we are considering the effect of the drug as well as the herb so either we are getting the additive effect or the antagonistic effect either herb or a drug it is having the same effect isn't it so there will be the addition of the pharmacological effect and that could be considered as the additive effect so effect of the drug it is going to be increased then second one that is the antagonistic so here the herb is going to act as an antagonist towards the drug and the pharmacological effect of a drug it is going to be decreased so pharmacodynamically the interactions are furthermore classified as additive and the antagonist moving towards the pharmacokinetic interaction so furthermore the pharmacokinetic interactions are going to be classified as adme that is absorption distribution metabolism and excretion related interaction so very first one the absorption related interaction so whatever the herbs are there they are going to increase the effect of drug by promoting its absorption or 
they are going to decrease the pharmacological effect of the drug by decreasing their absorption isn't it the absorption of a drug it is going to be moderated or it is going to be modulated by the herd then second one that is the distribution so here the displacement types of the interactions are going to be seen with the herb and drug so there might be displacement of a drug from protein binding sites for example albumin then the third type of the pharmacokinetic interaction that is known as the metabolism so here in the case of metabolism the major organ involved that is the liver and there are certain herbs are there either they are going to act as a enzyme inducer or they are going to act as a enzyme inhibitor for the specific drug so thereby the plasma concentration of drug it is going to be increased or it is going to be decreased then the excretion it is related with the kidneys clearance and so on might be the herbs they are going to decrease or increase the clearance of the allopathic medications there might be chances of competition of the drug for the renal elimination so according to mechanism the interactions are going to be classified as the pharmacokinetic and the pharmacodynamic pharmacodynamic like additive and antagonistic and pharmacokinetic like absorption distribution metabolism and the excretion let us move towards the certain sort of examples of the herb drug interaction no doubt we are going to discuss specific drugs related with their side effects and their drug interaction but before discussing these drugs uh, we are going to discuss certain significant drug interactions uh, which are found with the herbs and the drug very first drug i have cited over here that is st john's wort that is also known as the hypericum so this st john's wort affect the clearance of the many drugs they are going to change the clearance of the cyclosporine then antidepressants then digoxin indinavir then anti cancer drug irinotecan and the imatinib so this is a kind of significant herb drug interaction and here the st john's wort going to alter the clearance of the many the second one that is a salvia multiopsia inhibit the coagulation so that way leads to the bleeding when we are combining the salvia multi or <coughs> salvia multi or his with the warfarin when we are prescribing the ephedra with the caffeine there might be chances of fatality fatality isn't it so one should not combine the ephedra with the caffeine the combination should be avoided ephedra contains the ephedrine isn't it then the ginkgo biloba along with the warfarin or aspirin cause the bleeding as a ginkgo biloba it is going to thin the blood when we are combining the things with the warfarin or aspirin that may lead to the bruising and bleeding then the mucilage containing herb when it is combined with the certain potent medicaments potent drugs there might be chances of reduction of the absorption of a drug because whatever the potent medicaments are there they are having a small dose and they are going to be absorbed on the mucilage containing herb and thereby there is a reduction in the absorption of the potent medicament furthermore the mucilage containing drug they are having a ability to decrease the blood sugar level they are going to reduce the absorption of the sugar as well as they are going to promote the secretion of insulin so one should precautionally combine the mucilage containing drug with the anti diabetic medication then spicy substances like uh, ginger and capsicum they are having the ability to increase the absorption of uh, many drugs so the effect of these drugs as well as the side effects are going to be increased 
then hard tonic herbs such as uh, hawthorn digitalis and cactus should be avoided when taking hard medication so there are certain hard tonic herbs are there if the patient is on a therapy of the hard medication one should avoid taking or one should stop taking the hard tonic then caffeine containing herbs as a caffeine it is a stimulant like a green tea kola nut coffee herbal stimulants like ephedra should be avoided when taking a hard medication or mood altering drug or the antidepressant we are getting certain side effects when we are combining the caffeine containing herbs with these medication then the herbs or formulations containing the licorice when combined with the diuretics like a furosemide that can cause the depletion of potassium in the body so one should not combine the licorice with the diuretic like the furosemide while taking antidepressants like a monoamine oxidase mau inhibitors one should avoid the african aphrodisiac herbs containing yohimbine then the green vegetables as you know that like broccoli spinach cabbage which have the high vitamin k content so one should not combine these green vegetables with the anticoagulant and antiplatelet drug like warfarin and aspirin then grapefruit juice grapefruit juice it is uh, going to act as a inhibitor for the certain drugs they are going to prevent the metabolism of drug and thereby the plasma concentration of certain drugs are going to be increased along with their effects along with their side effect right so grapefruit juice interacts with the calcium channel blockers like antihypertensive it is from the antihypertensive category lipid lowering drug psychiatric medications oral contraceptives allergic medication so it is going to modify the metabolism by cyp3a4 inhibitor it is going to act as a cyp3a4 inhibitor right and it is going to increase the pdc levels of these drugs so this is about the certain examples of her drug interaction so here with we have finished an introduction to the her drug and herb food interaction